Okay, hello. I'm uh, Aaron Banner. I'm your host for today's podcast. Uh, I serve as the director for Zintegra Security. I'm a retired Army colonel. I've got 26 years in the IT and cybersecurity space. Um, today, I wanted to focus on our Partner Spotlight series as we dive deeper into managed detection and response with Expel and discuss how and why uh, they're an industry leader in the MDR space. With that, I want, you, want to introduce you to uh, Tyler Zito, uh, who's Expel's Senior Solutions Architect. Welcome, Tyler. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, Aaron, I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name's Tyler Zito. As Aaron mentioned, I'm the Senior Partner Solution Architect here at Expel. Uh, so my primary focus is going to be working on having technical discussions, technical enablement around the Expel MDR services with our broader partner community. So working with Aaron here for the last couple of months and I'm uh, excited to be on today. Yeah, yeah, same here, Tyler, thanks. Um, you know, we, we've got a saying here at Zintegra, uh, we, we like to drink our own champagne. Um, by that, we mean uh, if we're recommending something to our community, it's because we use it, we like it, and we trust it. Um, you know, a little bit about our relationship with Expel. We chose Expel uh, because it's the right fit for Zintegra. Um, it integrates really well uh, with our current environment and our tool sets, um, and it's been tailored uh, between us and your working between us and your team uh, to fit our SecOps model um, along with our people in our security operations and and IT departments. Um, you know, I can honestly say that, um, you know, we've been extremely happy with Expel um, and we really witnessed the value uh, firsthand within a, a little less than 48 hours um, of our initial deployment. Uh, you know, you guys uh, alerted on something that, that you know, seemed nefarious um, and, and certainly enough, it was. Um, and, you know, they, they had tried multiple times to get into our network. Um, and, and by putting Expel on our network, you know, we we found that uh, and and we mitigated it, you know, within 31 minutes, I believe it was, in in our back and forth discussions with your team. So, so yeah, I could say it's fair to say we we noticed the value, you know, up front, and it's been an excellent investment for us. Um, so, so Tyler, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you uh, to dive a bit deeper into Expel. Uh, I'd like to start with with some questions here. Um, you know, and, and what I'd like to focus on is the complexity and, and the vast expanse of the detection and response sector. So, you know, with so many DR solutions out there, uh, can you tell us uh, a few things? So what what MDR is, because I don't, I don't think it's clear in everyone's mind, um, how it's different from all the other DR solutions, so EDR, XDR, NDR, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, how Expel delivers that? And then finally, um, how does Expel differentiate itself in this very congested space? Yeah, happy to uh, tackle some of those questions. And you're right. I think it is cybersecurity, especially in the, well, just the cybersecurity space in general kind of became the, the game of acronyms, you know, MDR, XDR, um, ZTNA, and you have all these different terminology that people are trying to wrap their heads around. So focused on the MDR, which is managed detection and response. Very competitive space today. Uh, we, we're seeing a lot of emerging companies tap into the space. And I think it's around the realization that organizations are starting to recognize it's really difficult to manage manage security operations in-house. And that's going to be for a couple different reasons, right? So alert fatigue, having a lot of tools to manage, having miscommunication, um, it's a lot of headcount. It can be you know, wildly expensive to try to build this out in-house um, to make sure that you are getting the monitoring and detection necessary across your security stack to ensure that you are safe and ultimately making sure you're covered from an organizational standpoint. So with the difficulties of that I just mentioned, right, they're starting to look at third party service providers. And that could be, you know, whether it's an MSSP, um, managed, you know, endpoint, co-managed SIM, or an MDR provider. 
a lot of them are going to get bucketed into that MDR term, right? And you could talk to 10 different customers and they can tell you 10 different definitions of what they think MDR might be. From a spell standpoint, our approach to MDR is what do we want to cover is we want to meet customers where they're at in their digital transformation or their, their journey for um, security efficacy. So taking the tools they already have in place and providing 24 seven around the clock, uh, 365 monitoring on the security tools that they have in place, not requiring them to go out and purchase new technology, not requiring them to um, jump through a bunch of hoops ultimately to work with us as a partner. And so now what they're able to do by leveraging third party providers like Expel and the MDR spaces, allocate the time of the people they have in house more strategically to other priorities and other projects that are going to move the needle for them operationally, as opposed to having their head underwater with alerts and handling tier one, tier two type tasks. Now that was the first part of, you know, what is the MDR approach? What value can that bring to customers? You asked me about four questions there. I apologize, Aaron. And the, and the follow up on that was, was it how is Expel differentiating ourself in this space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my final question. Really, how does I mean the the space is so congested. You know, there's there's a lot of great companies out there. Um, you're you're clearly one of the very best, if not the best, in the space. And so, yeah, curious how you differentiate yourself from from everyone else. Yeah, I think it comes down to the customer experience. That would be the foundation of it. Uh, very customer focused. We want to make sure the experience is not going to be something that's cumbersome and it's not going to turn them away just to turn over an year because they, you know, we didn't live up the expectation that we sold them on initially. I like to focus a lot of when I talk around Expel around simplicity. Um, everything we see innovation wise, right? And whether it's in the tech world, it's you know, anything that kind of surrounds our lives is we're looking for simpler ways and more convenient ways to get through our life on the day to day. I don't know how many people are actively looking for more challenging ways or trying to make their life more difficult. In the security space, things have traditionally, you know, from like the MSSP approach, right? I managed um, security service providers where they kind of take control of everything in the environment on behalf of the customer, never really yielded a great result. And our founders at Expel came from a Mandiant background. So they're familiar with the managed services in the IR space. And what they wanted to do with creating Expel was to eliminate some of those gaps that they saw from the, the service experience and try to make it really customer centric. So the approach we take in Expel, we like to talk to this as a be, bring your own technology approach. I mentioned that earlier on when I was talking around the MDR space, just the kind of the, the players in it, but it's really capitalizing on the investments customers have already purchased, not telling them you need to go buy a new tool for us to support it. In some cases, sure, it could happen, but we have such a broad integration network and it's so streamlined to getting onboarded, you know, as you uh, could attest to, as you did when you opened up the podcast, it's very simple to get onboarded. It's not a heavy lift on the security teams we're working with, and you recognize time to value very quick. Now that's the first part of the simplicity, right? Around the customer experience. The second part is gonna be the transparency and communication we have with our customers. Now, sometimes when you go and see an MDR provider, an MSSP, they're gonna tell you, hey, we're gonna manage and, and work out of this specific tool. This is gonna be how you're gonna see everything. Um, not always gonna be, living up to the expectation of what you're sold on. So Expel's approach is let's just share the same access to the user interface and we call it Expel's workbench. Um, we often refer to it in house as the decision support platform. It's the tool in which we're going to ingest, aggregate, correlate, and um, centralize all the security events from the customer's environment. So our analysts can go in triage, make well-informed decisions, ultimately getting the customers the outcomes. Having shared access to that allows the customer to watch these investigations, watch everything unfold in real time. We're not leaving anything behind closed doors and being able to communicate one-to-one -one with our analysts, either through that tool or integrations through Slack or Teams. I can't count how many times I've jumped on to like a customer onboarding session and here within the first two days, they're like, yeah, I'm already sleeping better tonight. Um, <laughs> knowing that Expel has this, but also the means to communicate it just builds confidence in the relationship.
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I've got to say that um, from our perspective, that is one of the things we like the most about um, our experience so far with Expel. You know, the onboarding was was quick. It was it was simple. The integrations happened rapidly, um, almost intuitively. Um, and then, you know, we there are things that as we as we see alerts coming up, you know, we we start to learn that these are these are common and then we can just say, hey, you don't need to alert us about this anymore. You can take the necessary action on this. Uh, and, and then there's other things that we can be directly engaged on because no one knows our environment better than us. Um, and, and so I think we can we can get to resolution a lot more quickly uh, by us having access to Workbench and, and the Expel team has been extremely responsive, um, always there when when you know we I mean we we communicate through Slack mostly, right? And so you know if we if we have an issue and we want to report it to you, we get instant response um, and, and vice versa. If if you report something to us, we have you know a, a pretty full team of folks constantly monitoring that space and um and we can get to resolution very quickly um so that's a yeah go ahead yeah i was gonna ask something on that it's a good point and i think it's a it's valuable to call that out because what you mentioned right you guys know your environment better than anyone else um and one thing i apparently glossed over in the previous question was how we leverage automation and the human element um, in tandem to really deliver this exceptional service where we have a lot of people, a lot of organizations are leveraging AI automation, machine learning, right? In one way or another to try to streamline, you know, how they deliver their service or how they get to outcomes. Uh, one thing Expel intentionally wanted to avoid was making things too automated. And by that, and to what you're saying there, Aaron, is we can add customer context in, right? And that's going to be on, on your input, right? But how we use that customer context is going to rely both on automation and human ultimately humans making decisions. And so how do we use those in parallel and keep technology problems, technology problems, right? So if there's gonna be an analyst is gonna pick up an alert, every single time they're gonna do a, a certain subset of tasks um, when it comes to triaging, what can we automate there and what do we need to leave to the human? And then how do we put that in place? Right. So when you see those updates, I think a lot of that comes from, hey, they're already pre-packaged with a lot of this context. So now they can go right to you and say, Hey, Aaron and team, this is what we're seeing. Can you verify? Um, but it's also being cognizant of not over communicating. We don't want to. The whole point is to so your team can be a little more hands off. So having some of the customization, not only with what we choose to alert on, but how we choose to notify you, I think um, it resonates a lot uh, with customers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even down to our IT T team, you know, they they love being involved and and it creates uh, situational awareness across our our SecOps and, and IT. Um, hey, so so Tyler, with that, um, you know, what are some of the the common challenges uh, you see that Expel is solving for our customers? Yeah, there's, ooh, right, that's a long list. But you know, on the short list, Aaron, um, from Expel standpoint. Um, I'll, I'll kind of brush through three or four of them that I see are going to be the most relevant in my conversations, at least. I would say the biggest one is customers needing to secure their cloud um, and get on it fast. It's I mentioned digital transformation a little bit earlier. We still see a, a heavy adoption in the cloud, whether it's going to be full hybrid or, or you know, sorry, cloud native or, or a hybrid approach. You're venturing into kind of the unknown, and so when organizations go into the cloud. There's a lot of unknowns. It's not as a, a well-known attack surface. It's not as you know well-known threat intelligence um, tactics that are reported on cloud environments, not relative to like enterprise you know, endpoint and network uh, type environments. So having a trusted partner that you can onboard, plug in your cloud environments and have them monitoring and identifying anomalies in that environment day one, that's huge. Um, and it, Definitely that kind of speaks to the testament of, hey, I'm sleeping better already because I'm not worried about my cloud environment right now. We're able to focus on the migration or adopting the cloud as opposed to how do we secure this? You know, and and that's kind of like always festering at the mind. Point number two would be customers needing to 
have some sort of security operation center, but not wanting to build it in house. Mentioned earlier, there's a lot of complications that come with building a SOC. That could be from a allocating the proper talent. You know, highly skilled analysts are hard to find. And when you're building a SOC, typically you want to find someone with experience or, or several headcount with experience to kick it off. Well, those are far and in between right now. They're far and few between. So that's going to be a challenge. It's also expensive. Yeah. And once you get much. it, how do you retain um, that talent and make sure they're trained and there's quality and consistency? And that's a common challenge we see. So it's like, okay, do we take on these headwinds or do we look at a trusted partner that executes very well in the security operations space? Now, yeah. that also, oh, go ahead, Aaron. No, no, yeah, no, I, I was just agreeing with you. Um, yeah, that's the, you know, have, having, not just the number of people, but the right people. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's so challenging, and and retaining them, and, and just the the time and overhead for for building out a SOC. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a challenge. A lot of people would probably like to have that capability, but it's there's just a lot behind it. Yeah, and you you probably know better than I. I'm uh, I just hear from the customers um, or the partners I'm working with. But on top of that, that, that brings out another point, and it's another differ differentiating factor uh, when it's it's addressing some of these challenges. Is you know I'll, I'll spin a little, I'll talk a little bit to my background. I used to work in the MSSP IR space um, uh, from a large technology vendor, and a lot of what you see with MSSPs is they adopt problems from customers, right? They say, hey, I'll take that. Let me take that off your plate, but it really just gets displaced and, and put on theirs. I think what Expel does very well is not adopting the problem, but actually finding a solution for the problem, which is why we've been able to scale, you know, at the rate we have been um, and still maintain that high level, uh, you know, quality service to our customers. It's, it's finding a solution, not just adopting one and putting it on our plate and figuring out, okay, how do we deal with this now? Do we hire more people? No, we got processes and people in place to make sure we can alleviate those problems um, uh, from the get-go. Now, the last piece here, Aaron, I want to touch on uh, just on the challenges, right? You know, I said there's a lot, but it it's also going to be suffering from alert fatigue. And, and that's going to kind of come into helping augment some of the tier one and tier two tasks off those teams. And you have a lot of tools. There's a, there is so many security vendors in the space. There is so much signal that it, people are trying to wrap their heads around. They take the SIM approach or the SOAR approach, maybe a combination, and then it's really hard to manage that too, right, to, to the standard that they want it. So where Expel can really win is, hey, we can help alleviate a lot of that noise. Again, allowing you to strategically allocate your time somewhere else that's probably going to be more beneficial both for your people and your organization. And we can just augment that piece. So keep your security operations center, you know, keep your people in, in house, allocate their time more strategically, let us handle uh, the tier one, tier two type work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to move on to, um, to, to something that, that a lot of folks pay pay attention to. So this is kind of a big one. Um, and you know, there's a lot of great companies, really great companies uh, that, that you know, landed in kind of a, a top of this, this list that I'm about to describe, but Expel was number one. And it was clearly number one in, in, in both, you know, where it looked at, where it was depicted graphically. And, and then in, in kind of the, you know, the, the details of the report, the narrative, if you will. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got yourself positioned um, at the very top of the Forrester report, uh, the Forrester wave, you know, that just came out recently. I mean, just, just some things about, you know, what were the things that you did um, that, that just kind of separated you from the rest of the crowd? That is a, a great question. We at Expel, we love the Forrester Wave because we've executed very well on it. Not just this round, but I'm not sure, Aaron, if you remember when it first came out uh, about 20 months ago. They do it like every year and a half. Right. When that first one came out, Expel was top up and to the right, right on right. par with where we are this time. So that was a lot of people's introductions into like, who, wait, who is this? Because you have some of the larger <laughs> vendors in that space that are like, Expel who? Right. They're doing what? And now suddenly 
you have the attention of uh, people that are paying attention to some of these reviews and these analyst reports that got our, you know, our name out there. Now it's like, okay, was that a fluke? what they do to get there? Can they do it again? And then we execute it again, again, with the highest current offering and the best score um, for the current um, offering today. Now there's a few reasons for that. Now, I think one of them is we are customer obsessed. This delights practitioners. This makes them happy because it's a simple tool. And I think I go back to that point of simple, but if you make things more difficult, right, even the, the smallest inconvenience can affect consumption from a customer standpoint. So when you provide something that's digestible and effective, and you're not going to bog them down with more work, I think that's very attractive. And we also keep them, um, and, and as you've experienced, um, even as you as a customer of the service, we're very focused on making sure that we are transparently communicating everything we need to to you, and you're resting assured and being able to sleep at night. I also think the vision of where Expel sees security operations going helps us stand far and above. Uh, we were not focused just on endpoints, right, to start. So we're managing a larger um, security environment. So SaaS applications, think of like identity providers, um, like Octas or Duos. You have your cloud infrastructure, AWS and Azure, where there's not a lot of tools to monitor AWS environments. Um, having a, a vendor that can come in there and tap in and, and apply their mature uh, detection strategy around that is very effective. You have your EDR, your networks, your SIMs. So we cover that full scope of really what a lot of people want to have monitored. And I think a lot of people sometimes go down that SIM route because they're like, well, I want everything centralized and correlated here, but the execution on it, it doesn't always land. And so what Expel has done very well um, with the offering now is we can correlate all that information on the supported technology we have, and we're covering you across you know, commodity malware, ransomware, business email compromise, phishing attacks, uh, network intrusion. So you're just getting broader coverage. And so we're, we're covering more bases with the Expel MDR service. And we're continuing to inv innovate in that space. We want to continue adopting new technologies that we can support and monitor. Um, so we continue to scale with customers. It's not just being effective right now, but what do we do in the next, you know, one year, three years down the line to make sure our customers are still happy? Right. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I mean, as you indicated, you know, there are some some big names, some great companies that, you know, were, were kind of on the top of that list too, you know, like Red Canary, CrowdStrike, Arctic Wolf, um, and, and, and all great companies that I think a lot mm -hmm. of people like, but you were still, you know, just, just edging that out. Um, and, and I think, you know, probably back to your earliest, uh, point in this conversation, you know, I, I personally think a lot of that is really the simplicity behind Expel, um, and the customer experience. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about. The, the customer experience throughout this, um, but are there a few other key things you'd like to highlight about uh, what a customer experience is when, when they're a client of Expel? Yeah, I think it's, that's a great question. There's a lot of examples, but I think uh, I have a couple good ones that I want to talk to. Um, if anyone's familiar with the customer NPS score, um, I do like to call this out because Expel has a very high NPS score. Um, especially for a service provider. And that's really a net promoter score. It's what is what are your customers saying of you essentially in the review? We sit right now at a 75. Anything above um, 70 is considered great. Um, anything between like 30 and 70 um, is considered good or considered excellent. And so we're still in that upper echelon as we've continued to scale over the years. We haven't seen a significant change in that MPS and we still stand um, really high in that tier. So that's something we're proud of. That's reflective of the work we want to do and, and how we try to make sure we can always pivot and focus on the customer experience as we continue to grow. Because with, with growth and scaling, it's sometimes it's hard to maintain that factor um, of the product or service you're trying to deliver. Now I also want to talk about a, you know, a customer experience or um, an example of where does Expel go above and beyond? And, you're probably familiar, Aaron, with like applying customer context. How can we apply specific context around your environment to have more information and respond more effectively to things that you want to be on the lookout for? 
Pamela yeah, Bears. very familiar. And it's flexible. I would say from your experience, you, you would probably attest that it's a flexible approach. It's not so cut and dry of like, hey, we'll do this and not this. Sorry, and we're not going to push customers away. We like to have the conversation to see, okay, maybe we can't meet 100% of it, but what can we do to get you to where you are comfortable? And we had uh, the director of our security operations was uh, telling a story and he had mentioned we had a customer that uh, had a presence in Ukraine and uh, during the turmoil between Russia and Ukraine in 2022, they had a lot of concern from any kind of connections behaviors coming from uh, that nation state. So they wanted to build out um, an auto contain on alert, right? So essentially anytime you get an alert with the parameters around communications coming from that location, they wanted to auto contain, then verify, and then take those machines back offline. That is a heavy lift. And I don't know, I, and that's just, it's just a lot going on, right? Especially for a big organization. So they were able to build and support so they can turn that around in a day. This is like a, a high outlier where high it was high stakes, but it definitely shows that Expel is able to move fast in a pinch to help our customers um, in a time of need. And when I was uh, at HQ, we had our one of our you know co-founders and our director of SOC shared that story in separate rooms, not communicating it, but you could tell how big of a win that was. I'm like, hey, we delivered and we delivered fast and this is what it meant to the customer. Right. Yeah. No, thanks for sharing that. Uh, it's it's that's pretty interesting. And and you know, with my military background, obviously I'm always very interested in how those things are are playing out. So glad that Expel could play a role in 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 that. Um hey, well Tyler, you know, I try to keep our podcast pretty short uh to make sure mm -hmm. everybody gets as much as they can out of it uh with as little time spent on it as possible. So uh, you know, I want to ask real quick, um, you know, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about Expel before we depart? Yeah, uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Check us out online, right? We have a lot of good blogs that we're putting out around current events, uh, things that would just help practitioners in general. Um, and we also, Aaron, we do have a free trial motion. So um, something that I think is pretty cool and you need to Expel with customers that are trying to explore um, Kind of embarking on that MDR journey for where they're going to down select. We have a free trial. We're happy to put that in front of customers just to get a taste of what it's like to be a, a customer of Expel before ultimately making that decision. Oh yeah, no, that's 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 great. Um, anybody that gets to try this, you know, for free for a little while, you know, I undoubtedly think that they're, uh, you know, they're going to be won over. Um, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so Tyler, uh, so hey, thanks a lot for spending time with us today. Uh, you know, we have a really great partnership with Expel um, that continues to grow daily. And, and you know, both, you know, with our use of Expel and integrating with your team and then on, on the, you know, basically the customer desire to bring companies like Expel um, into their environment. And so, yeah, I, I see I see lots of growth that's happening now, and yeah, I think it's only going to get better. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate your time, and and I really look forward to our next engagement. I know your time is very valuable, so thank you. Um, and so, yeah, just to the audience that's listening, hey, well, well, folks, that's you know that's a wrap. Um, you know, bring your security security challenges here to Zintegra, uh, so that we can find the right solution for you. Um, you know, our business is to build a community and then create solutions that serve that community. And so with that, uh, thank you and, and have, a, uh, have a wonderful day.